This video is for anyone who ever wanted a pump action mega blaster that could also shoot three dot shotgun rounds. How about some rival rounds? You know what, that shotgun round, we could, I think we can do better. So here are some half length worker darts. Do you even know how to load this, maybe? Now you can too. Let me show you how I made it. This project is based off the designs posted by Dan Garcia on Thingiverse. However, at the time of recording, he hadn't posted any instructions on how to create the internal priming bar, and I only had these two reference images to go off. So there will be some obvious design differences in this build. Now let's go over the parts you're gonna need. Two pieces of aluminium flat bar. 50mm long M4 screw bolts with Phillips screwdriver heads, and matching nylon lock nuts, a quarter inch irrigation rigid riser, it's just thick walled poly pipe, and of course an upgrade spring, you can actually use any Roto Fury upgrade spring, here I'm just using a trusty old Century Spring Co C836, a thrusting cut to get your arms pumping, a passive aggressive butter knife, and a manual dremel. Ooh, they got tiny handles. Oh, they're so cute! Phillips screwdrivers, ones that'll actually fit into the holes of the blaster, but if the head is too small, it'll strip your screws. In 1875, America signed the Treaty of the Meter, so technically, all Imperial is defined by metric. Flush cutters that'll work on plastic, not a butter knife. Don't even look at him, he'll cut ya. Start printing before modding, because regardless of your print settings, it's a lot of plastic, it's going to take hours. Let's remove all the screws, and remember, the big long one is in the back top corner. That is dangerous, whoa. Travel back in time to re-remove the sliding shroud. Trigger lock removed. Let's get that air restrictor. Dang it, Hasbro's glued it shut. There's a back plate retaining the air restrictor, so let's drill some holes to create some fracture points, then using a flathead screwdriver we'll chisel some cracks to break it off. Wipe away those plastic shavings. We've cleared it out, but in doing so we've created some extra dead space. Let's fill in that dead space with some low temperature hot glue. Then wet your finger and smooth it out. Don't be shy now, get in there. Oh my god! 
You don't have to do it all in one go. Slowly build up layer by layer. Remove the priming lock that's behind the gearbox. This orange part is like a brace for the bolt. But we're going to be replacing it with a new 3D printed part. Now it's time to do rocket surgery. We're going to open up the gearbox and do the spring replacement. As some experienced modders might notice, this is actually the same gearbox that's in the Roto Fury. Of course I did that. Oh well. <laughs> The flat boss on the second stage gears faces outwards. This here inside the gearbox is a ratchet lock. The orange catch piece ratchets along the inside of the priming rack, which forces you to pull the bolt all the way back before you can push it forwards again. Then once it does, those fins on the outside of the rack pushes on that slope, resetting the lock. Align the key slot as you put those gears back in. It is kind of intricate. Woo! Far out. Okay, very intricate. My god! Woo! Oh, nearly. All right, the pins are in, the gears are in. Oh shit, I don't think that's gonna prime. This, oh, whoa, whoa. <gasps> whoa. Okay. <gasps> These are powers you shouldn't mess with <laughs> outside of the blaster. Um, crap. Uh-oh. <laughs> Everything literally just went everywhere. That's amazing. <clears throat> I make mistakes so you don't have to. This is how you do rocket surgery. We just throw science at the wall and see what One sticks. Six. No idea what it'll do. Probably nothing. Best case scenario, you might get some superpowers. Worst case, some tumors, which we'll cut out. There. So you can put it back together without putting the ratchet lock back in. <sighs> 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 
as you've just seen me painfully learn, for the screws to actually clamp the gearbox together, they actually thread into the shell. So put the gearbox back inside the shell before doing a test prime. And that completes the basic performance mod. So you can put the blaster back together if you don't want to make the internal pump grip. The benefit of removing that ratchet lock is now we can deprime the blaster. The first shotgun slide is done printing, but in order to fit all the darts through, we're gonna have to make that opening bigger. In before the question, why didn't you just use a Dremel? Well, if you can get a Dremel cut that straight, you're a much better Dremeler than me, but also this kind of points out you don't need to have a Dremel. Alrighty, now we get to play with some aluminium and make some priming bars. Part of the priming bar actually slides through here. I wonder what kind of tool we'll need to cut that off. We'll leave a little gap there so it doesn't bottom out every time we prime. Now, I'm going to have to calculate the dimensions on the fly, so I'll share with you at the end of it what dimensions I come up with.
should just cut that off. <laughs> eh. Cut our way to freedom. You're so noisy there. That's too high. Oh, so close to getting low enough though. Nearly. Eh. Damn it. Ah, now I'm too close to the line. Oh, I haven't crossed it. You've wondered where I've been. Shall we go the other way? I need to go higher because I'm hitting this. Let's do a test fit. Alright, we're gonna have to cut that off. We'll use this guide to mark a line. Just use a Dremel, jeez. No, you can't make me. Nah, nah. I don't care. Ah, uh, all right, fine. I'll... Huzzah! And this part appears to fit through here. Unfortunately, though, not quite. Ooh, it's very tight. Yeah, and that's flanging the plastic. So what we'll do is we'll file this down a little bit more. I'm trying to keep as much material as possible to keep it as strong as possible. That's why we're trying to use as much here. back in we can nearly get there but because we've made that thicker and stronger the plastic channel is getting in the way cut some of that but how much exactly looks like about 12 mil These are the dimensions that I came up with. As I stated at the start, my design is a little bit different from Dan's. Also another point of difference is I didn't really like the aluminium rods for the kind of bolt and to serve as the kind of standoff spaces. Also using the stock screws that come with the blaster, these aren't really that strong. Uh, and they can't really take shearing force that well either. As you can see, it just twisted off because I made the hole too tight. My solution, M4 bolts, 50 millimeter long, with poly pipe sleeved over them. You can see here, I did try using 35 millimeter long bolts. However, they were too short to go all the way through the priming rack and the new 3D printed priming rack brace. 
and have both of the bolt heads facing inwards into the blaster. You can see I did the front one the wrong way around and the barb that's left behind after you cut the thread down was poking inside the blaster and uh, it was hitting on the internal parts. And to make sure that the back lock nut actually fits into the bolt slot on the shell, make sure the hexagonal faces are in line with the slot. Finally, because of the priming bar was in the way, I couldn't put both screws back into this little piece that acts as a support between the upper and lower halves of the shell because, you know, there's a giant slot cut into it that weakens it. However, it still keys into the two screw ports, so I think it helps. Anyway, onto the pump grip. Slight problem with the print is a bit bumpy. It isn't very good for the slide. So it's a bit tight. Let's just file that down just a little bit just to get it smooth. Alright, now attach on the pump grip onto the priming bar using two of the stock screws left over from the bipod legs. Now I've already stated I don't really trust them for their strength, but there's two of them and they're in line, I, I don't know, I think they're, they're fine because I've used them twice now at two different events and they've seemed to held up alright. That's uh, good enough for me. Ooh la la, controversial I know. I think it is? Uh, anyway. So, I'm using some Teflon tape here to beef up the O-ring. I only used about five layers. Uh, that seemed to be just enough just to expand it, because remember, the plunger tube is slightly tapered, so as it's all the way back, it doesn't actually fully seal. Ooh, that's way better. I use Das Grease, it's uh, an Australian washer grease, which is safe to use on rubber, silicone, plastic and metal. There we go, that's way better. Before I attach the second half of the pump grip, I did pre-thread the holes using the thick screwdriver and uh, the more of the leftover screws from the bipod legs.
So now let's do an FPS test, but do keep in mind that my print quality didn't really come out that smooth. So I'm getting these FPS numbers with a kind of rough finish on the inside of my barrels, which aren't as smooth as the inside of barrels that have been injection molded. Half length darts, we'll see what kind of FPS we can get. 79, 63, 64, 65, remember that's three darts at once, so 60, that wasn't that far, 65, 72, 64, I'm going to try some full length waffle tips, a couple, two more half length, 61, 60, what's that trajectory doing? Yeah, it's alright. 61 again. 67. 56. 60. 73 with those Stefan. So less foam, less drag. I'm now curious if we can get really perfectly smooth barrels in these mags, if it'll be better. 72. That's cool. The science got done, and you made a neat gun for the people who are still subscribed. An absolute mountain of gratitude for my benevolently patient Patreon supporters. Thank you so much guys, and also thank you very much for watching. I hope this was useful, I hope some of you may now start to open up your Thunderhawks. I know, th I know that gearbox is intimidating, but... Once you learn it, um, it's actually really cool, and I hope this gets you into working with aluminium, because it's actually really useful. So, who knew? Anyway, um, we will be back to our regular programming now that this is done and out of the way, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, do leave a comment if you want to let me know what you would like me to do an extended mod video on next. Something, I don't know, something weird or detailed, I don't know. Um, not another strife though. <laughs> and some matching nylon knock- <laughs> Nylon <laughs> Fill in that dead space with some hot glue- oh my god, dog. Holy crap, now I gotta find anything. Oh my god. That was the dumbest shit ever.